Hey there, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. So are we going to see this uh, last ditch wave of illegals? There's thousands of migrants supposedly headed to our southern border. Let's ask Laura Reese from Heritage Foundation, who's my next guest on the James Show. First off, welcome back, Laura. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. Thank you for having me on. Well, I uh, I am hearing that there is an attempt for migrants to make their way to our southern border. I'm also hearing reports within the WBAP newsroom, my friend Kimberly over there, who says uh, a lot of them are being picked up and sent back. So are we going to see this last ditch wave or not? I believe we will, uh, particularly starting after our election day. Um, if uh, Trump wins, then there are there's going to be a race to our border for people to try and get in while Biden and Harris are still in office. Um, and frankly, even if Harris wins, uh, I think Mexico will stop upholding its end of whatever bargain it made with secretaries Mayorkas and Blinken to slow down the flow through Mexico to make numbers look better up until the election. So um, they'll say, okay, it's your mess now, and uh, allow them to continue on to the U.S. border. Well, Laura, so that theory I'm, presupposes there's coordination between our governments. Well, it's it's pretty clear. I mean, last December, when the numbers were pretty bad again, um, the highest ever, in fact, then Secretaries Mayorkas and Blinken from Homeland Security and State Department went down to Mexico, and then they struck some sort of deal. It's pretty clear because then the numbers dropped, and we do know that periodically the mil- Mexican military will show up uh, in northern Mexico. Uh, they have been busing uh, some numbers back down to southern Mexico. They're not doing that um, out of charity. So uh, the question is, what did we give them to do it? But I think it all ends uh, November 6th. I hear you. So is there anything we can do about it? Just keep an eye on it or what? Well, um, I mean, between November and and January, um, you know, it it would be great if if Congress would uh, rescind some funds from this administration, but they've shown no uh, willingness to do that, unfortunately. So their hands aren't clean either. So what we can expect is more of what we've lived with the past four years, which is processing most of them into the country uh, and north into, you know, our small towns that are are being overwhelmed. Um, As of, uh, they just closed the books for the fiscal year for 24. So, so far in this administration, CBP has encountered over 10.5 million, both at the ports and between the ports of entry. Um, So, you know, record numbers and uh, Kamala Harris has just revealed she said the quiet part out loud in a, her uh, most recent interview that while Americans are interested in mass deportations, she's interested in mass amnesty. Ooh, where was that? I would like to get that clip. I believe I want to say it was the Univision um, interview. I'll go get it. Thank you very much. Uh, the other thing is, uh, how come we're not calling for another Minuteman project? You remember that back in? I guess it started around two thousand four or so. And uh, it was a whole bunch of volunteers that just decided to take their vacation time and use it to patrol the border. And it was just a bunch of civilians in their own vehicles and motorcycles and Toyotas and whatnot. Uh, but maybe we should try that again. Yeah, I, I'm not aware that, you know, that was government sanctioned or government requested. I think that was rather organic. Oh, it definitely wasn't government sanctioned or requested. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a valid question. I think the numbers are just so high that even our, you know, brave volunteers that would be willing to do that would be overwhelmed themselves. Um, and so, you know, perhaps that's why people haven't been doing it. Um, also, I'm, I'm rather confident that the Biden-Harris administration would, would throw them in jail, uh, given what they do to who they consider to be their political opponents. All right. Well, that's kind of disheartening stuff, but you're probably right, Laura Reese. Uh, Thank you very much for your time at the Heritage Foundation. Uh, How do they find more of your work outside of WBAP? Um, They can follow me on Twitter or X at L-O-R-A underscore R-I-E-S or at heritage.org. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon, Laura. I don't like what she was telling us, but it was seemed like the truth. And I don't know. It just feels like one of the situations that we're kind of helpless about, you know, if. 
there there's so many things in life that there you could at least address. We can't stop the border. I mean, I mean that's why I was bringing up the militiamen thing. Coming up next, though, uh, we were joking yesterday. Kamala Harris surprisingly just decided to take the day off two weeks before her presidential election. You know, why did she take the day off? We were joking that maybe there's a new season of Handmaid's Tale or she's up in the attic looking for her old name tag from McDonald's. Uh, it turns out she was making a new video saying that Trump's uh, fascist and you are too for supporting him. Ha ha ha. <laughs> You'll hear it next on The James Show. 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. I'm James Parker. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. My next guest, Bill Dindy, financial planner. You've heard him on The James Show before. I want to bring you in because... A lot of people are talking about the election, and rightfully so, but uh, inflation is still happening, still affecting us every day. And I think um, the, the the newest info we have that inflation is, is moving the needle on is we've got some new tax rates now. Uh, I'm sure you probably saw this. Without getting into the specifics, we don't have to give out the, the numbers. Do you think these tax bracket changes are actually keeping up with inflation? Well, it's interesting that we have, statutorily speaking, taxes moving up. Uh, unless we get uh, an extension and tax rates, I think they're more than keeping up. We've lost deductions. Most people are just taking the standard deduction more on their personal income taxes. And uh, we're, we're uh, making more money. So percentage wise, the government should be taking more. If our salaries have increased eight to 10 percent, well, then the amount of money we're paying in should have increased at about eight to 10 percent as well. And it may be more than that as people move from one tax bracket to the next. Yeah, and you, you see the big jumps in tax brackets. It'll go from a 10% bracket to a 12% bracket, and then there's a big jump to a 22% bracket, and it, that's not at a very high level. That's $96,000 for married couples filing jointly. So a lot of people, um, you know, they're, they're trying to stay below that that first big jump in brackets. What do people do to avoid that? Well, it's kind of interesting. I remember growing up hearing people say things like, I wish I didn't make that extra money because it threw me in a higher bracket. And I thought they must be doing something terrible, like going back to dollar one and taxing us a lot more across the board. But, you know, keep in mind, if you go from the 22 to the 24 percent tax bracket, you go from keeping 78 percent to 76 percent of what you make. So you still come out better. But as you point out, if you go from the 12 to the 22, okay, you go from keeping 88 percent to 78 percent that seems like a big difference but uh the, the the ways people control that moving up of brackets is getting those above the line deductions by contributing to their 401ks and and getting off the top before it hits our agi um and i, I think that uh uh for many people uh they're probably going to find 10 and 12 percent brackets a gift a few years from now and i'm seeing a lot of folks go ahead and in their first years of retirement anyway converting money from their 401ks or their iras into their Roths, paying 10 and 12 percent in order to never pay taxes again on that money because as you say the brackets are going to statutorily move up and we're having that creep along the way so uh it, it may be a great time to do some tax planning where we're able to pay some taxes at that 10 to 12 percent. But for a lot of folks, that's when you first retire, when you don't have other income coming in, pushing you over the top, when you can go ahead and live off the checking and savings for a while that's non-taxable, and then go ahead and pay taxes at 10 and 12 percent. Because I bet you 10 years from now, we look back at 2004 and say, oh, my gosh, I wish we were back to where it was before. No matter who's elected, I'm afraid taxes may go up on personal income tax rates. Well, and if nothing happens, your taxes are going to go up in, I guess, 15 months. They're, the tax cuts are set to expire. The Trump tax cuts expen- uh, expire at the end of next year. And I, I know you're a financial advisor because when I ask you about taxes, you have to bring up Roth conversions. I think that's in like your licensing. Uh, so <laughs> Roth, Roth IRAs. I think to, to get something tax-free forever, what a gift. I wonder if Roths are going to survive another decade. But while we have them, and with the idea that if you have and they'll be grandfathered in forever. I think it's a great, great practice to get things tax-free forever before tax rates statutorily just go up uh, if we don't have a change, but maybe have to be increased anyway because that's the only way the government 
is able to take in money to ever pay down that debt. You know, Bill, I wish this got more of a focus in the on the campaign trail, this and balancing the budget and inflation. It's not to say that like illegal immigration and abortion or whatever isn't important, but this is the kind of stuff that affects everyone every day. Where do they find your help outside of WBAP, Bill? It's Alicorn Investment Management, A-L-I-C-O-R-N. Thank you very the much. Unicorn applies. God bless you. Bill Dindy again on The James Show. I'm going to hear from The James Show reporters, and I want to hear from you, your experience early voting. Let's hear it. 800-288-9227. If you saw something fishy, I definitely want to hear it. If it was normal, I would like to hear that too. We're just getting on the record as we are documenting history as it happens in front of your face on Decision 2024. 800-288-9227. I'm James Parker. You're listening to The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. I'm going to defend the good name of McDonald's, believe it or not, but I got one more James Show reporter, because that's what we've been doing. You've been calling in and giving me your reports on your early voting experience. So let's go up to Donna in Nakona. You're on the James Show. What was your experience early voting like, Donna? Okay, uh, first of all, everybody was polite, but when I went to go in the building, they made me move my car. Because I had Trump stickers on it. And you can't be within 100 feet of a polling place? Yeah. Correct, correct. So I had to move. I had to move my car. And then when I went in, of course, course it was a paper ballot. But I had a problem. Couldn't couldn't get one of the candidates to to fill in the dots. So I had to just get a stylist, and it worked through. And I was in and out in less than five. Y'all still make the boots up there? Oh, yes, we do. And the gloves. There you go. All right. Thank you very much. I don't know. I, I thought maybe they had shipped it to Mexico or something. It's good to know that those are still made in Texas. I appreciate your report, Donna. Good job. Good job. Isn't that fun? People just calling in and being James Show reporters for a second? That's great. Uh, we'll continue this tomorrow. And it, it, Look, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but even if you have a normal experience, we need to hear this. We need to hear it because if someone else calls in and they're like, well, something shady happened, we could say, well, we've had three other people call in and they didn't confirm that. They had good experiences. So it's good to get all this on the record. However, you may have noticed a hell of a coincidence in the news in the last couple of days. We were all giggling on Monday's James show about what happened with Donald Trump at McDonald's. And it's so fun to see this guy just acting like a normal dude and doing what a lot of us have done, drop some fries in a fry machine. I mean, that's just kind of a rite of passage for many people at the beginning of their career ambitions. And uh, it also had the sort of double entendre of reminding people someone used to say they worked at McDonald's and then they stopped saying they worked at McDonald's after they were called out on it, which made it more suspicious. If it's so damn true, why did you quit saying it? And so now people are forced to have that conversation. It does not work out in Kamala's favor. And, and, and on one hand, it shouldn't be a big deal if she lied about having a minimum wage job. On the other hand, why the hell, what kind of psych- psycho would lie about working at McDonald's anyway? You just throw out lies that could be disproven because you think your audience is so dumb they'll never know the difference. And even if they do, you can get away with it. What are you, a sociopath? Are you a pathological liar? Or were you trained? Did, did someone poll test this or... I don't know. A lot of questions came up. So that was the brilliant part about the move of uh, doing the McDonald's visit on Sunday. But since then, 48 hours is all it took. We now have two, two items for McDonald's in the news. Number one, they're being investigated by the CDC for an E. coli outbreak. Oh, my goodness. Now, E. coli outbreaks, I don't care. I'm going to go eat there, whatever. I understand how it works. Someone had a bad pack of onions in Pennsylvania or somewhere distant. It's not going to be in my uh, McDonald's over here. They serve like 4 million hamburgers a year, and eight people got the runs in some state, 11 states away. whoop de doo They're still safe. But news like that kills companies. News like that can crush a company. Chipotle almost went out of business because like six people got diarrhea. And it's it's something that um, we notice. And if you're as far limited government as me, the, the type of Republican or libertarian that wants to get rid of the FDA, we've noticed a long time ago that doesn't matter how much regulation you have. There's still going to be listeria somewhere. There's still going to be someone who undercooks the chicken or undercooks the hamburger. There's still going to be outbreaks. And it's not like the companies don't have a built-in interest in not getting their customers sick. Think about this. If you ever if you ever get to go to the restaurant, even if you have a good meal, but it makes you sick, are you going back? No. So they have a built-in incentive with the 
profit motive. Oh my goodness. Evil profits. Yes, that's the reason they don't want to get their customers sick. It'll hurt their profits. So I, you know, uh, it, I'm not doubting that there was some E. coli that could be linked to a couple of McDonald's somewhere in a distant state. The point is, is that the timing, the timing is everything. Because yesterday you had three Democrat senators, one of which Elizabeth Warren. When do you ever agree? When has Elizabeth Warren ever been right about anything in economics in her entire life? Name one. So Elizabeth Warren, the guy from uh, Pennsylvania that might be losing his reelection in a couple weeks and uh, some other backbencher. They, they sent out a strongly worded public letter to McDonald's saying, we don't like how much you've been raising your prices. What the? So? So what? That's none of your business. You don't get to have a, a, a say-so senator from Massachusetts in what how McDonald's does their pricing. Oh, but they call it price gouging. Ooh. In the, in the letter itself, I don't want to read the whole thing, but uh, you can go check it out. It's really not that long. It's just boring. They, they even undercut their own assertion in the beginning of the letter when they say, despite the fact that uh, most of the other uh, restaurants and chains in your sector have raised prices, you seem to have raised prices even more. So they're not upset that they're raising prices or even that it's a lot. They're raising prices a little bit more than some other people. And when it's that subjective... When it, there's not like a concrete benchmark that they lay down, oh, th- then you can guarantee this is politically motivated. And so, like, if Arby raises their price by thirty percent, and McDonald ra- McDonald's raises their price by forty percent, and you only go after McDonald's, well, you're obviously picking winners and losers. You're someone who is an economic illiterate anyway. It's, and price gouging is something that on a future show we'll talk about. It. It's not even really a thing. The most most of the time, people describe price gouging, what they are describing is free market pricing that they disagree with. However, it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not, as long as they're not outside government intervention, uh, messing with the price structure. If it's too high, they're not gouging. You're just wrong. Oh, the price is too high. No, the market's right. You're wrong. You think the price is too high, but if that's what the market can bear out, then you're wrong. If that's not what the market can bear out, they'll either go out of business or they'll lower prices on their own. It's not something that you need to interfere with. However, it's the timing. If one of these had happened on its own, I wouldn't think this would be necessarily politically motivated any more so than the other 364 days a year that Democrats are going after free market uh, successful corporations and try and bring them under the heel, trying to seize power, trying to control the pricing or the quality and whatever. They're just always seeking control over business. Now, you want to intertwine this with the video that was released this morning from Kamala Harris talking about how, oh, my goodness, Trump is such a fascist and everyone who supports him. Oh, such a fascist. Just if you missed it earlier in the show, I'll play you a little bit of that. Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, a retired four star general, confirmed that while Donald Trump was president, he said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. <laughs> get, get a hold of yourself. So McDonald's makes Trump look good. They have to go and destroy the good name of McDonald's. And that's what you get. That's the lesson to all you other corporations and businesses. If you want to try and help Trump out and humanize him and make him look like a decent human being, you're going to you're going to have uh, consequences. Right, Farrakhan? Louis Farrakhan speaks about have McDonald's. Have been to McDonald's lately? I'm not laughing, damn it. I'm not laughing. And damn it, don't you laugh. Because they're killing you with your taste buds. You don't understand Satan, but you'll hate me for exposing them today. There's a slime in the burger. It's got silicon. They've practiced how to deceive your taste buds and your nose. Yeah, but it's delicious, Lewis. All right, I have another keyword for those of you trying to win the trip to Vegas to see Motley Crue, Dolby Live at Park MGM. Your keyword is good. G-O-O-D. Text that right now to 95819. Good to 95819 for another chance to win. Your next clue will be on tomorrow's WBAP Morning Show. I'm James Parker. This has been The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3.